my constituency, St. Joseph, you know. Um, wonderful people there, and there are some things that we have to do. We have a, a new health center to build. We have acquired the land um, in St. Joseph to build the health center. So we visited there with the acting minister for health and his staff, and um, of course our power rep and, and other ministers to look at what we propose in it. I have suggested some changes, uh, which I believe may make a little more sense um, in terms of what we're seeking to achieve. So the idea is that we will build a health center and let it be completely for health and wellness purposes. Up upstairs will be administrative structure and space and, and, and better amenities for the staff. And we will move to construct a residence for the district doctors. Uh, so that will be done in Hillsborough. We'll identify you know, small lots there and build a home for, for the resident doctors. So there will be no residences um, on the health center site. Or the hospital side, almost the hospital, you know, because it's going to be a huge structure, uh, much bigger than we do health center that we've been building, because St. Joe is the is, is the center of the St. Joseph Health District, and, and so the facilities there, and the amenities there must be must be different from there. This facility will be the main health center in the St. Joseph Health District. As you know, the Dominican government has always been a government for the health of the people, and primary health care being the major aspect of health in Dominica. And we see construction of these health centers as being very paramount in the in the health of our people. And as a and as a result, we have decided to build a health center in the St. Joseph area to augment the health system in the in, in the in the health district. And we in it is going to be well well designed and it is going to be well detailed with a maternity section, with a casualty area, with an area for the doctors to do their examination, pharmacy. And what the residents will be will be built outside the health center because there is no we don't want to have anybody residing at the, at, on the side of the health center. And when this health center is completed, it's going to be the main health center in the Central Chief Health District. And as you know, see NCDs are the main health issues in Dominica. And we want to have the health centers ready and waiting for the people to come to get their health checked. And we always, always advocate that you should not allow yourself to get sick. You could walk into the health center and ask to get your pressure or your sugar checked. So we call it a health and wellness center. The name signifies that you don't have to be sick to enter there to check a routine track of your health. And I'm very happy to be part of this government that is taking the health of the people very seriously. And it is going to be beginning sometime this year. The designs are at an advanced stage. The land has already been acquired and we are just expecting the construction to begin very soon. And of course the basketball court, uh, which is so important to St. Joseph and of course basketball nationally, we will move to have it covered um, from the elements and improve the marking to put the acrylic um, painting markings on it and of course um, enhance the drainage um, along the, the basketball court. So these are some of the, of the interventions we're we doing there. And housing of course we, we have committed to build homes for individuals in the lots of project central constituency including Bells and including um, uh, Layo, St. John Mayor. But I've always had this view that we need to redevelop Layo and and um and mirror lie on St. Joseph, including mirror. Um and because we all know have to appreciate the history of these communities. These were sharecroppers who were given small lots to build their little hut, their little home at the time. Um but these communities have evolved over, over history, over time. And so what we need to do is to acquire some of those small lots, put them together and to redevelop them and to build better housing units um, for the for the residents of those communities. And so I have mandated the Ministry of Housing and Land, so we'll come up with some concepts and go back to the villages to discuss with the community, uh, led by the power rep, and I'll be there myself as well, uh, to share that vision with them. But not only just chop it in wood, but put in paper for them, so we can have appreciation for this, so we can redevelop the community. Because what we have done, uh, you know, I think we need to stop a bit so we've been building homes in Hillsborough Gardens, which is fine. And there are many families have benefited from it. We built maybe what, in a 60 home 
in his revenge. Um, but these are six years so of families we have taken out, like out of Lai and Sente, and most of them younger people with children. And so you don't want to have a situation where you create a new community and create economic and social challenges for the existing Senju and the existing Lai. So we need to go back to these communities and redevelop them and have them repopulated uh, so that we can have the kind of life St. Joseph has been known for and the night activity and the weekend activity. You won't see it now because there are all the young men and women and their children up on the mountain top um, in Hillsborough. Um, a wonderful community, but I think we need to focus on redeveloping those, those communities of Lyo, uh, St. John. Mayor. So I, I want to, I'll be personally, myself as Prime Minister, leading that uh, um, with, with absolute and full support. Uh, with the, with the rep, but I, I believe it's so important that I, I need to have a part to play in it and, and have it pushed and, and pushed far. I would like to see some of those forms started this year, 2022. To be honest, as a young member of the community, I think it's it's a real positive moving forward because it's for the ministers, for the prime minister himself, it's a busy schedule. And he took the time to come here to see us. I met him recently, just came back. I, um, I was in China studying for the period of five years. And now I'm here as a young community member wanting to see the community move forward, not just with the older people, but, you know, with the youth so that there can be a balance in a movement towards. And I think that is very good. With the project of the community health center and all the prime minister explained it, I think it's a very positive moment because, as you know, it's lower down in the village, but this will be more accessible as you connect to the fire station. So this could be better for people to, to transit back and forth. And the, the, ideas that they, the ideas that they put in, it was very, very positive, to be honest. In my period of study, I played a lot of football for my university at the time. So football is it's, it's somewhat of a love to me. So therefore, I love this. I've never played basketball, but sports on a whole, I think it brings the youth to a different place where they need to be because I'd rather you see youth play sports daily rather than they may be on the get or they may be idle. Because idle hands it because a lot of problems. So that is a very positive movement as well. From all reports, and one can see the, the quality of the work um, is, is, is to standard. And uh, we're happy to be here to, to witness the um, final opening. It's costing us an $8.9 million. So, um, but we always felt like it's an important piece of infrastructure that we need to reinstate um, here on Hillsborough. Uh, so, we want to I certainly commend the Minister. For his leadership and of course his staff for their technical and administrative support and to also recognize the usual diligence of um option marine um you know they've always delivered on time and, and the quality of uh, the specification so when we thank them um and, and, and the local company okay uh the local dominican company you know sometimes we people say we don't give local people work you know uh, which is always far from the truth. Um, and of course, the, the power of Senjo, who has sought to um, lay claim on the bridge. And she has a central constituency bridge, and so she, she's been um, very diligent with her, her support uh, to the Minister of Public Works on, on, this, on this project. Um, there are some works we have to do on the other, other bridge. Um, so at some point, this other bridge will be closed with vehicle traffic and I'm hoping for, for a short period, certainly a much shorter period than, than this one uh, because they, they have to do some remedial work to ensure that we do not have a failure of um, this existing bridge and so forth. Um, so this is going to tie in nicely with the role, work we're doing um, towards the, the Lyle Valley, um, York Valley Bridge. Um, the extensive work being done there. Um, it's really uh, the construction of a new road. Um, finance, financial loan funds um, from the CBD. And, and so we look forward to the completion of that section of the road. I mean, there are so many um, benefits to, to this road, you know, um, for agriculture, for tourism, you know, improved communication, you know shorter distance to the airport for so many of the, of the communities along the west coast you know so so there are a lot of attendant benefits and it is not even 
competed, and the the, the folks there are so excited about um, about, about the road. Um, you know, having an appreciation for for what will be done there. So I'm very happy to be here. Um, you know, and of course, once we complete that section from the Layu or the Hillsborough Bridge to the York Valley Bridge, then we look at the section from the York Valley Bridge to the junction at um, Sultan. And that will have completed that entire roadway and enhancing communication um, for all of us in North America. Um, all of these things are being done, as you will recognize with the huge challenge posed uh, to us uh, on us by, by the COVID-19 pandemic. Where we have seen, you know, over time, revenues have dropped and, and certainly expenditure has increased. And even now, the revenues are back, back, but the expenditure is not where we would like it to be, especially the current expenditure. If we are still managing COVID-19 and the, 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 the associated challenges that we brought up. And here it is that we have this war uh, between Russia and Ukraine, and we have seen an increase in the oil price, literally overnight. And that is going to get to us uh, sooner rather than later, because this part of the world, um, oil production is huge, and, and many parts of the other world depend on oil production in, in, in this part of, of, of Europe. And, and so this is going to even create increased challenges for us. And that's why we talk about external shocks. So we have no control of what's happening in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine. Um, but something's going on, going, on, going on over there, and we're going to be impacted by it. And, and, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it because it's an imported um, matter. It's an imported um, uh, implication. Um, and, and so this is why we always maintain that the prudent and responsible management of the economy is so important. And, and we have been a, a, a generous and responsive government but also a responsible government and, and, and people have to give us the opportunity to continue to be responsible um, with where you come back with the affairs of the state and, and not make undue demands or outlandish demands when we know of the circumstances um, confronting Dominica and, and the entire world. But we're here on, on the hills of great and I'm happy um, that um, it's completed. Again, I want to um, thank everybody and um, this the 8.9 million dollars came from local funds, so they're all local funds, um, and it's amazing that we were able to do so. And had we taken a decision in light of COVID-19 and all of, all of its difficulties to defer the reconstruction of the, of the Hillsborough Bridge, I don't think anybody in Dominica would fault us like this, um, because the Dominicans are reasonable people by and large, and they would know, look, man, we have a bridge already. What do we need a second bridge? Uh, you know, so many other issues the country has. But we, what we do not want is a situation where this last this bridge collapses and then you have no uh, no bridge. So we wanted to ensure that that we, we bring this bridge and the engineering up to up to up to standard. And of course, the minister who is who is a, who's an, a, a, an engineer by profession will explain some of the um, changes engineering changes that we have had to make on, on, on this group. So I really want to, to thank everybody and, and to thank the minister and the staff again for their presentation. Well, certainly uh, I would like to start off by thanking the public for their cooperation and uh, their, their patience throughout um, the implementation of these works. Um, this bridge was damaged in due to the flood events from Hurricane Maria back in 2017 and as a result of that what we saw was damage to the southern abutment and the southern pier thereby compromising 52 meters uh, of our bridge deck so what we have done since was to come up with a, a scope of work to to repair the damage the damaged bridge as you will see across here, uh, we have constructed a retaining wall and we have extended the wing wall so as to protect the abutment from any type of uh, sparring or er erosion from possible flood events. So that is one of the considerations that we have made to add some sort of 
resilience to the project. Um, we had, as you see, a lot of site preparation. Uh, the, the site is completely enhanced. Um, you will see also that um, that we have six piles. The contractor, Ministry of Public Works proposed what would have been the the pile design, and the con the contractor was responsible for performing test piles to actually determine the loading of the bridge on each pile. Um, this area, as you know, um, a lot of dredging had occurred in the past because, in fact, uh, we are on a sand bed, a river bed. And um, this is not the typical type of foundation for doing our large infrastructure projects. Hence the reason why we felt it was critical to have detailed uh, sub subsurface investigations by way of geotechnical testing and investigation. So what we did is we tested a pile and we applied load to it and um, we monitored the deflection of that pile um, so we could have an idea of what would be the bearing capacity um, on that particular pile. So we came up with a six pile arrangement uh, to support the abutment and the southern bridge pair. And I am extremely pleased with that type of detailed work and investigation by a local company. As a government, we, ha we have believed in local contractors. In this case, we had a tender process and a local contractor was awarded the work and they have proven to us that they have the necessary competencies to complete $8.9 million of bridge work. And not only that, to confirm our geotechnical um, considerations. Um, so that is in fact um, very good for the, the local workforce here and for the state of, of contracting. We also see a different design in terms of the, the shape of our piles as well. And you will see it allows for deflection of water, of boulders, debris, whatever comes um, you know, in the direction um, orthogonal that's perpendicular to, to the bridge. And that in itself protects the, the bridge from any possible damage um, during large flooding events. Uh, so there was serious consideration from an engineering standpoint into this project. Uh, and I am very satisfied that this was completed in 10 months. Um, this project really, we, we, we thought it would have taken eight months, but of course uh, we had some uh, setbacks by way of weather um, and we had some other logistical considerations and setbacks uh, and due to COVID largely due to global logistical uh, shipment issues. Um, you would have noticed also that we used new girders, completely new girders. The aim initially was to have used the girders um, to have repaired them and replaced them but that decision was made to procure completely new girders. And um, um, so people should feel satisfied that they have what is in fact a stronger bridge, you know. And um, I'm pleased that uh, this is the type of resilience and value that we are, we are adding to uh, our engineering projects. Um, government is certainly pleased um, with the work done in the Lyo area over the last few years. If we look towards uh, the west, we have a sheet pile project, and again, it was done by this contractor, Offshore Civil and Marine. And when we compound the cost of this sheet pile wall project, again, to protect the roadway, to this bridge investment, and again, to the road that the Honorable Prime Minister spoke of, we're speaking of investments in the area of $30 million. And this is within a, a four kilometer uh, span. So this is quite significant investment, uh, even in a very difficult time. But this government has promised and committed to the people uh, that we will ensure that there is resilience in our infrastructure. And this is really the commitment unfolding and unraveling right before our very eyes. Um, so I'm pleased to be associated with that. I'm very satisfied with the work by the contractor as well on the the, the road project, the four kilometer road project as well. Many difficult engineering considerations as well. Uh, we had an original design where it was, we were meant to have 
retaining walls pretty much spanning the entire length of the river and the road and we moved away from that after having more considerations and the decision was made to realign the road and move it slightly north away from the river itself um, creating what would in fact be a buffer uh, so we have now reduced the need for so many walls um, this project is four kilometers roughly and uh, we intend to do it in two phases um, it is not completed as yet but already you could see that there has been significant reduction in driving time and um, I know I myself and for sure Dr. King um, has received feedback from the farmers in this area and um, they are very pleased uh, of, of this uh, reduced driving time and um, they can already see what is unfolding and, and what is to come. So we are satisfied with that investment. The intention is to have this completed uh, by the end of this year as well. And um, I'm satisfied that this will be another very transformational project in this area. Um, from our side visit, the Honorable Prime Minister has given the instruction to finalize designs uh, for the York Valley section uh, all the way to the junction um, at Warner Sultan area. So we are working on that. We have preliminary designs at the ministry and um, we are seeking to finalize that as well. So again, another truly transformational project. So thanks to everyone uh, for their, their patience with this project and for the belief in this government that um, when we, we say we are going to do something, and we, in fact, follow through on our promise to the people. I must say today is a good day to be the parliamentary representative of St. Joseph. <laughs> and why do, why do I say that? It's because the best day in the life of a parliamentary representative is when you are able to deliver promises made to your constituents. And certainly, all of the areas that we visited today will be transformational, just as the Minister for Public Health said, for the people of St. Joseph, the common man, um, where we are standing, it will not only benefit the St. Joseph people, but also the entire western um, district of the island. Um, as you know, this um, bridge would, that was damaged as a result of um, a Category 5 hurricane, Hurricane Maria, which completely or almost entirely um, completely destroyed our island. And this, and this bridge has been one of the bridges that, um, that our people have wanted to see being restructured for a while. And I must take this opportunity to thank the Minister of Finance, our Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, because he saw it as priority even in the most challenging times and very challenging times. A lot of the world talk about the COVID-19 pandemic and how it has affected every area. But in Dominica, it even has affected us more because we were just recovering from what was Tropical Storm Erica which also caused damage in this area as well. And then Hurricane Maria and then Festival uh, pandemic, as you just COVID-19 and one that we're not seeing any end to. And we are able to do such a huge project, $8.9 million worth of bridge um, in this area. Certainly it comes from a government that is willing to keep its promises. And I am very happy that I chose to be part of this productive team I've um, always admired the Honourable Prime Minister for his love for people and it's something I really want to truly emulate and today I am happy because my people of St. Joseph are truly happy and so they being happy makes me happy. This bridge will open um, access between north, south, south and north and as you know it has been very challenging to travel around this area because you have to wait for one, one crossing and from north to south before south to north. To north and this has created um, feuds even among drivers and we've had a couple accidents so i'm very happy that this is finally coming to an end and i just want to say thank you to the minister of public works as, as well because from the very moment that we started working together this was one of his dreams as well and he has worked closely with me and have been part of every aspect he and his team has always consulted um, in every way um, to, to introduce me to the contractor so I could have that kind of rapport with them on a daily basis um, to 
actually being knowing what is happening at every step of the way. Even when they had little delays, to understand why there were delays, um, to understand the logistics, why certain things were happening. So it has been a very long journey, but seems very short now because we can see our bridge and that is very good. And even as we stand there, we are also celebrating the construction. I say the construction because it is truly a construction of a new road from the Hillsborough Garden, from the Hillsborough Bridge to the Young Valley Bridge. Um, that, that road has not been um, easy to transit for a while now. And um, we've had several estimates and several studies in that area as to what was the best way to go. And today you will see as we drive along the Lai Valley Road that much work has been done. Um, we, were, we were told by the contractor that excavation will be, will be over within, within less than a month and then we will see other types of, of works being done. Um, the farmers in that area have been reaching out and here is a very rich crop of farmers, over a hundred, uh, hundreds of farmers um, have farms here and they used to be very productive. And because of the challenges of the road production has dropped. But even now in the early phases of the road, they have already started increasing um, their, their planting so that because they expect production to increase tremendously because of better transit for their produce. And we talk about from this area all the way up to Sultan. We, we talk about areas like Atli, like Bull. We talk about Pasai Garden. So it, um, uh, so it is a, an area where farmers used to plant a lot, but because of challenges, they weren't able to. And that is what we are doing for the local farmer in this area. But not only that, we'll be increasing our tourism product. As you know, the Lai Valley is known for its tourism product. We have river rafting, among others. We also have a hot pool. We call it the Gosho. And the people come from all over Dominica uh, during holidays and weekends to spend time at Gosho and even in the middle of the night. So not just Sufriere and water and even that they go for the hot water right in the middle of the Lai River. Does exist in hot water um, pool that people will be happy. And I think we will see the traffic increase in this area in our tourism product as well. Also, the transit to go to the airport. Um, this has been a very, very used, used area to go to the airport and St. Joseph people now has to use either the Warner Road um, or they go to Springfield area. But now that we have this road going to be completed, it will make transit very much easier. So it's, very, it's a, a very exciting moment for us here in St. Joseph constituency.